Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the Cyber Pro Podcast, where industry leaders share their insights. It's six questions in nine minutes because hackers never sleep. Let's get to it. Question number one, tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, uh, my name is Sergey Shkunov. I'm a founder and CEO of IonTech Software, uh, LLC, which is a really small consulting company. We do software development and ethical code audit. So don't let my title confuse you. I'm still a very technical person and involved with all the processes. So I, I read the code every day. So that's that's what I do. Nice. Question number two, what's the best thing about being a cyber professional? You know, uh, it's probably a daily application of your creativity. You have to be creative with uh, all that's going, uh, going on around. So you have to um, get into somebody else's shoes and understand how things work and find new ways to tackle exactly the same, uh, same problem. So you have to always think outside of the box. So I'm going to add a question here early in the conversation, uh, just, just to see if you're ready. What are some of the, 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 the most fun things that you, you find creative uh, in your job? Like what, what specifically do you find to, to, uh, that allows you to really work through the creative process? So, you know, especially, and that's, that's what probably uh, I, I like most is reading somebody else's code. So uh, that's, that's when you do uh, code analysis. Static tools are really fun to work with and they could spot uh, necessary information. But when you really have to think through that, you have to imagine how the, that other person had been thinking when they were writing that code and then um, kind of decipher what the message they, they were trying to tell. So that, that's probably the, the best that I like here. Perfect, almost like a detective in that case. Yep, yep, that's, that's exactly what it is. With plenty of time left, Sergey, question number three. Other industry leaders have told me that cybersecurity is a top concern. What does that mean to you? So, you know, uh, think about it. Today, software runs our lives. It's everywhere. It's in cars. It's in your fridge. So any issues, especially security issues with the software, can cost any company uh, at least its reputation, uh, can do a lot of damages, and potentially, like, like we discovered, uh, can cost human lives. Uh, for example, is that that uh, software that had been delivered is one of, in one of the planes. So unfortunately, that's, that's what's happening. So and embedding a bad uh, code um, is it, that's, that's why it's everywhere around the news. So you see, you see that happen with another company a uh, couple, uh, couple weeks ago and it's unfolding. So there are so many systems had been compromised. That's, that's, why, that's why it is on top of everybody's mind today. Very insightful answer. Question number four, what piece of insight do you want to share with other cyber and IT professionals? Uh, so that's, you know, everyone uh, heard that humans are the weakest part of the system. But not everybody knows there, there is another side of this story, that humans are irreplaceable part of the system. That's why we as a cybersecurity professionals have to think from, uh, from that perspective and kind of tackle all the aspects where a uh, system, particular system touches, interacts with humans. Because that's, that's where all the breakdowns are. So think about it. Um, every system in the world, whether it's hardware, whether it's software or any combination uh, of those had been either designed or manufactured by people. So every system uh, had been configured, installed, set up by people uh, on day-to-day -day maintenance when system goes into production line, uh, it's been maintained by people. And at the end of the, that spectrum, 
So every system in the world has a purpose. And that purpose is effectively make people's lives better uh, or uh, which similar uh, Im improve productivity of, of those people. So that's why, that's why we as a cybersecurity professionals have to um, kind of understand psychology, human behavior, uh, and that, that, is, that is important uh, part of the, of the process. Uh, and that's, that is also fun part of the process. So for example, any security professional uh, has been working on uh, different security policies for their company. And um, let's see, let's, let's think about uh, security policy which required for our passwords, right? So maybe 10 letters um, long, and then has to contain all the, uh, all the letters, numbers, and special symbols. So if you just give that policy to every person, so some of them will just write it down and stick to their monitor. So that, that, is, that is human behavior. Um, so you have to actually empower, you have to um, understand that this is what's going to happen and empower those people with tools necessary for them to, to still do their job. Because at the end of the day, they, they have to log into those systems. They have to work with those systems and effectively conduct their business. So that's, that's why it is, it is quite important to understand that, that people are irreplaceable part of the process and where you cannot get rid of, uh, of, of the people you have to account for people making mistakes, like software developers who's tired on a project and they, they all, all they want is just to deliver that project as fast as they could. And they will be taking all the types of shortcuts. So you have to understand that this is what's going to happen if uh, somebody runs the project without thinking about people and uh, accounting for those is um, essentially a necessary part of, of our job today. So that's- that, that, is, that is a very eye-opening take on it, right? I mean, working in cybersecurity, I hear about this product helps you here, this solution helps you here, and, and it could be pre-breach to post-breach to remediation and, and you yep. name it, but you don't realize that all of those products were were created by a human for a human and yep. so that is that is an amazing way to look at it and and i i really hope that the network starts to see and realize that the human factor is is just has to be accounted for so so kudos that's a, a great way to look at things this is my favorite question. The final question, what is your favorite piece of retro technology that makes you smile? You know, <clears throat> that's really interesting question. Um, what always put smile on my face is really, really old computer. So that's, that's the computer that changed my life. So it's called ZX Spectrum. So it's being built by a Sinclair company um, and that's, that, that's where, that's where I started. So it's a computer with a uh, really slow, I think it was three megahertz processor and then 48 K of memory. Um, and, uh, it has a tape recorder. Uh, so if you want to load any sort of piece of software onto it, you have to plug in tape recorder and listen for, um, like 10, 20 minutes of squeaking and there you go. You can play your favorite game or uh, do something meaningful. So that's, mm -hmm. that, that is, and I, and I see, and I see how long of the path we, we had traveled. So it, it's really amazing. I love it when people bring up those old computers that they started with. And so you did it six questions in nine minutes because well, it was just because you're epic.